what was it in your acceptance of your mission this weekend that you felt how were you guided how did you prepare for this weekend how did you go about getting ready for this weekend in particular well um, in the all just about before we got here um, we had a very strong input from our inner planes uh, counselors and mentors that the east coast the whole east coast is really in need of um, uh, synergic type of uh, light groups. That means that a synergic group in this context means that a group that is open-ended in intention and uses a free flow technique. In other words, they basically take themselves out of the, they're still there as a coherent light group and interface for a streaming coming in but they effectively take their own bias, teachings, uh, structures, and so forth out of that uh, mental environment. And they're open to a free flow, that is, whatever their imagery, input, uh, senses, and so forth in the process. Uh, they're open to a new Metatronic context, um, a wholly new a universe reality that's coming in very quickly. And so that permits the inner planes uh, mentors to bring in their programs with more flexibility, a wider uh, effect, more precision uh, in that kind of a group. So the, the whole East Coast is um, their concern about uh, bringing this up to, uh, it, to, with that addition to the already working groups. Uh, so this, uh, is in their perspective, is sort of like a uh, match in Tinder, uh, starting a, uh, an exploding um, fire uh, through the coast. So that's a large idea, but that's what they say. Yeah. Uh, in a lar longer context um, of preparation, the we, is the program itself, what we intended to do, actually fits that, that uh, idea I just went through. And that is that the crop formations this season set up uh, a, a relatively simple formations, but the grids that the formations formed were such that it opened up the whole construct, the whole matrix of all the formations every year up to date. Formations aren't just something in the grass. They're great large programs that are installed in the planetary racial or the collective mind soul. And they stay there and grow. So this um, present season accessed in terms of self a uh, very uh, precise uh, formations and so forth and sequence in building the grid using the Rochelle grid uh, so we could track it. Uh, the access to all those programs. So there's a huge input that's coming into the planet uh, from that source. And that it place in, in England, southern England, is extremely holy, sacred, up to speed spiritually. That's how those formations and why they come in that particular area. So energy-wise, grid-wise, um, that accesses the whole planet in ways that are more complex. Um, but the point is that the planet is coming into a whole lot of new upgraded programs that have been consistently installed seasonally, and so it's a base, a wisdom base, that can now be accessed and the Rochelle system is key to doing that. In other words, these kind of groups I, I mentioned. So that plus other inputs from other directions is uh, it's telling us that we're in for, uh, um, well, as the formations themselves constructed, um, in for an all temples, sort of a cosmic composite of all temples, all dimensions, the realities and so forth 
uh, a kind of a temple for each uh, and a composite of them all, a synergism of all of them. Now that's a huge, huge idea. So this then led into the idea that we, since we're, we're shell-centered, we are tracking the, the grids in, the Eng in England and have actually been uh, our inner planes mentors have used those for our group to develop this this uh, all temples kind of format also leading into generation of our second moon that we lost uh, back in the uh, second mars war is the name given that anyway all of this is indicating that or has been an indication um, that uh, we need to come up with a program that will actually design a super temple format that can be put in place here and now based on systems that we've already seen, mainly prop formation systems, and use them um, to create this uh, super temple format. So that um, is the main thing that we've been working on. Uh, the opportunity came up for this um, precise way of doing this with an advanced group already in place and working. And uh, uh, so I think uh, it was, it's um, destiny and, and written in the stars. Be there, do that, then here we are. <laughs> That's a long answer to Great. short yeah. question. <laughs> Well, you talked a lot about heart coherency this you know, past mm -hmm. couple of days. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like we achieved the standard that you had set up for for that work? Oh, absolutely. And that's a key part of your program uh, in itself, and a very uh, vital, uh, essential of the essence uh, requirement for any kind of a project with that kind of scope. Uh, in creating a temple, the nature of a temple itself demands that heart coherency. Uh, we have been referring to it as the blood of Christ, uh, blood not being a sacrificial thing, but a, uh, an embodiment of the new DNA of uh, Yeshua, the Messiah, is the model for the new race itself, of, of other models, Horus and, and so forth. Um, so. The, that heart coherency is the blood or the new DNA for the new race uh, uh, and all the other aspects of blood itself, what it does. And it, it holds memory, uh, the water part of it, liquid, and, and so forth. Uh, we use that term uh, more specifically for the heart coherency, but the coherent it, it forms a field it, it, in itself. And so that field then supports, it's foundational for all actions. The Templars, as part of their formula, use the number 58. Uh, 58 in Hebrew is noach, the silence or rest, which is life itself, the divine unmanifest, beyond light, beyond angels, beyond everything, but life as in Noach's Ark. Um, and then the same numbers, uh, also uh, Hebrew chen, or grace, love grace. So this, this is divine grace. The heart coherency then has a field. Uh, we could expand on that field, but that's the basic idea of that coherency. And that's foundational, this silence rest combined with the grace factor of it, the, the state of being. That is foundational to all acts, any kind of action, thoughts, and so forth, anywhere at any level, atomic, galactic, or whatever, that's basic foundation. We were actually told that if working with the level of um, intensity and importance of what we're doing, what everybody's doing now, if the heart coherency wasn't uh, included, wasn't uh, worked with, that 
there was no reason to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They made it quite clear. Oh, wow. And that happened before you came here? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 that was, that's that was, yeah. that's with what we've been working with, they've just said, you know, if the car heart coherency is not included in the program and it's just about lines and grids and there's no love and there's not that mind-heart connection, then, you know, your the eyes aren't getting it right. And, um, you need to look at that. Uh, right. There's a flashy universe dynamic where our whole polarized dualistic, um, dualistic in the sense of polarization, uh, male, female, etc. This whole, uh, all universes work, are synchronized by something called the flashing universe. And we implode from one format to another back and forth. So this is the systems part of the universe existence and states. But now the other part of that, and the vital part, the real part, to all that flashing and creation process and so forth, is that non-polarized creation realm, the heart coherent uh, aspect, uh, basis, uh, that is the real part. So in this flashing back and forth, uh, there's an implosion point that acts as that vital, real part of uh, the whole universal uh, field. <coughs> The inner earth uh, people refer to that as the neutra universe, is the old very good term for that whole thing. So in working with light work in that construct, we can access any universe, any reality from atomic on, uh, black hole, white hole, blue hole kind of thing. and. Uh, uh, by doing that, we can work with all three modes as a composite. And so this is, takes the heart coherency idea into something that is actually dynamic and part of the creation process that we can get into as a group. And also, you know, the mentors that we work with, the mentors that are brought through, they're all about love. You know, they're not about just saying this cable goes here and that goes there and, you know, set this up. and. <laughs> They're, yeah. they're about love, yeah. Um, yeah. and it's, it's so it's, you know, it's yeah. wonderful. They don't tell us where to put the tables at all. They say, you have free will, use it, uh, and work with us, and we'll work with you. Uh, and it's a co we're co-creators. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So what was your sense, TV, before you got here? Did you have any awareness, or I know you, your life was in a, a kind Flux. of a different frame of <laughs> reference. But did you have any sense before you got here what the work was going to be about? Um, well, yeah, because we talked so much about star streaming and how important it was to uh, to get the bigger picture. That it's not just about Gaia anymore. It's about how does Gaia interact with it, with her brothers or sisters, with her family also, and how mm. as humans we're the bridge, you know, that we're we're needed to hold that energy so that those connections can be made. Um, without us showing up, um, it's a lot harder, if, if it's even possible. So I was really, number one, we had met you, and so we knew what we were coming to as far as uh, a supportive group. Yeah. And then number two, the idea of, of working in a larger star streaming, however that out pictured, um, holding those energies and getting on with laying that framework also. Mm -hmm. which is what we felt like we were here to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we came very um, gratefully and gladly to this because um, we felt it was so important and also we knew we were coming to a, a group of loving people that, that already were coherent. You know, it wasn't like a lot of workshops where nobody knows anybody, they all come because they're interested in the subject, but, but then they just, you know, after it's over, they go home. This time we were coming to a group that supported each other, loved each other, um, and we knew worked together. And so it was, it was, it was very good. There was no trepidation. There was no concern. Uh, it was, it was very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So then the day arrived, and here we are, right? <laughs> and then it's over. <laughs> so we began the work. Uh, the 
work that you had projected forward, at some point you said something to the effect of we did something or it was, I think it was at the beginning of the second day if I'm not mistaken. So the question here is, did the event that we just experienced, did it go the way that you had anticipated or the way that you had been guided in terms of your progression um, prior to the time as opposed to when we were in the experience? Well, happily it never does. <laughs> uh, we can set up an initial intention uh, and uh, get some methodology and uh, plans and organizations and well we're going to build a cosmic temple here and we're going to do this and that. But that's just a, a start point. The big joke, honestly, is that two weeks before a workshop starts, he starts going, well I'm going to plan for the workshop. And then he'll um, get a vision and say, oh, well, now I got to change everything. And yeah. it's like every day it's like, oh, well, I got another, I got more input, um, you know, so. Well, it happens for me at night. And then I wake about uh, at three in the morning and start contemplating and it starts coming in uh, for the next two or three hours. Uh, so I, the input at night and usually regenerates a huge idea then then that ripples the whole thing and uh, so uh, virtually as Edie says every day seems to be a shift in maybe not the overall format or structure or idea but enough of the big lumps in it that it, it shakes it and it, like a kaleidoscope a new pattern in effect, same field, new pattern. Yeah. So that is a constant thing, right up uh, to the day we came, but it happens during the workshop too. So I didn't plan past day one, and in any kind of session at all, uh, well in, thir in over 6,000 hours of doing this in session time work, over more than 35 years, we have used this initial intention, idea, and, and formats for actually set putting into the group session to start. And every time that intention has been honored, but hugely expanded. And in this case, same thing. Well, hu by huge, it's even greater uh, for this kind of a project. Uh, so that's, yeah, and uh, I learned some new lessons too, a lot of guys, but this was uh, a big one. So. I've got a question for both of you all. Is there anything that was unusual that really stands out about this experience as compared to some of the previous experiences you've had? I, I know you build, build upon each experience, but does anything really stand out as, as different? <coughs> Well, it always happens there are differences, but standing out, we ran in, I ran into, we ran into a situation that was unique in itself, which brings it up to the front, where we were into a galactic, um, group uh, reptilian basically and we were denied access into their system blocked so that was brand new to me that our hierarchical mentors working with the group would put us into that situation and it took some while to get there and uh, usually when we get to something that's strange or different, I can see some sort of a large, bigger picture. I can paint a, like a scenario that would possibly answer it. Uh, but this time I didn't, I could. Um, so that developed into uh, 
beginning to develop a chaotic situation within the group, losing our coherence. And other people not used to as used to the system began their own corrective stabilization processes, which I had to stop immediately. Because that would just start confusing it more and it did start. So in the light group there's it's not really a democracy, has a leader, and that leader is the leader because he or she accepts karmic responsibility for anything that group does. So if we lose con con the, that coherency, the unity, we're all of a sudden open to energetics that are really, it could be damaging to light bodies. So I had to take firm control of the group, which is about the first time in years that I've had to do anything, and I've had to do it more firmly than I ever have. So we did it, bang, and uh, we reverted, or we reestablished the line, the coherency flow, back to the last, by intention, back to the last point of relevancy to what was going on and so forth, back into that smooth, coherent state. So that's what the group did. Okay, so as it worked out, then uh, and we got back into what we really were and, and so forth. The reptilian outfit observed this and they thought, well, all right, these are good folks. We can uh, work. So long story short, bottom line, uh, it corrected itself very well. Okay, that in itself is, was a large thing and something I learned. <coughs> um, but the effect of it in terms of the, what the big project is, is gets more to, I think, answering the question. Uh, in our large expect or intention, one of the huge ones was uh, in bringing together two star streams. One is the well-known ancient one called the Ormaga, or the Star of the Magi. Uh, our central sun, Elcyon, and the Pleiades, and Taurus uh, feeds us streaming through the Orion system, the whole system, uh, centered by the three belt stars and the unfallen star Sekhmet. Um, and that uh, streaming then picks up all of that, and, which is, itself is a long lecture and then it uh, downloads into Sirius A and B and then that holds the program and our cathedrals and stone hinges and, and temples here on the planet then are linked into that. This becomes the star of the East, uh, of the Magi, the Advent and, and so forth. So that's one very important uh, Messiah, Avatar, religion, program maker, but there's another stream that complements that made up of grails and, and so forth. Uh, central sun, of all central suns involved, it's a huge thing. But there's a major as a grail pouring into a stream and then uh, Corona Borealis, another grail pouring into this stream and this main stream coming out of Aquila, uh, the eagle that uh, is a going to be, that holds the Missouri L central sun of all central suns, 409 of them, universes. Uh, that's held there, and then the Cygnus swan, these are Solarian birds too, Cygnus is the resh for the whole celestial sphere, all the constellation, or uh, galaxies and so forth, then our universe is loaded, access through Cygnus. So these two huge um, fields are fed into Lyra the harp. The harp converts the, all of that into a stream um, in terms of music, mathematics, and languages and, uh, as we would relate to it. And that streaming then is what the grails pour into their inputs, which are huge. And anyway, there are vital points on down 
Hercules is the Christ holding the sword. This sword of the Christ is also the largest programmer in this stream. And the stream goes down to Crater Grail and, and Corvus of Blackbird. But in this input into the sword itself, we have Draco, dragon, that its tail follows the precession circle around the north pole of the ecliptic, uh, the precessional uh, point stars right now, Polaris. That precessional ring was created for a purpose. It, and uh, it, with its center. So the tail of Draco is always in that ring, collecting information, flowing a stream in itself of major importance. And then the heart is the North Pole of the ecliptic. And then, but the head itself stretches over to that hand of Christ holding the sword. And so as the, uh, the serpent or dragon uh, sinks its fangs into the hand. This is a divine level insertion um, of all this information and states of being and so forth that this Draco processes. Now apparently <clears throat> this dynamic that, the represent, that the, uh, was represented here is being blocked was representing that Draco function, the dynamic itself. So there was something there that had to be opened. And we had to apparently then demonstrate that we could face that with grace and balance, which we did, and then recollect ourselves, recenter in that strong coherency uh, state of being. And that and then move with that, which we did. So that being the case then, that would open up this whole new Draco uh, level and state of being and function that we were calling upon. So I'd, as far as I know, this is the only time that we, anybody has ever connected the, the Northern Gate stars with uh, hand and sword. So all of that is going through the hand, that's the control, the Christic control of all those infinite programs in a sword blade. Um, and that conditions the major conditioning for this whole new star stream into the grail. Now the grail, the crater, there is a thing in the Hebrew, the stem and blossom, um, the proto synaic glyphs for the uh, letter uh, uh, Taith and Saudi, 9 and 90, uh, forms a, a stem uh, and a blossom, which is the pattern that this star stream forms. So all this information, states of being and so forth, uh, are, uh, in, are from grails into a huge grail. A grail is the field for, for the creation, whatever's going on. So the creation is formed constantly regenerating in this crater dynamic with the black bird, which is important. And then stream back again in this star, stem and blossom dynamic. Uh, so the blossom is the Aquila, the Cygnus, the Lyra situation. And then the stem is, the, uh, is that thing that we just described. So it's a in programming out uh, program through that that complements the other stream, the Urmaga streaming. So the both of them together meet in a very unusual place in southwestern France that is actually formed to bring the star stream in Urmaga down from uh, England uh, and they have Orion Belt hinges up there due south into that point and uh, the crop formations in the last several years have been keying into that, um, that ley line and then uh, projecting over to Glastonbury Tor 
uh, uh, which is on a rose line, but it, uh, it's complicated. So anyway, this thing in southern France is also a sort of a hyper uh, dimensional harp that can translate this downflow from Lyra into uh, terms that can be used here on the planet of advanced hyperspace, hyperstate uh, required for the Metatronic Ascension. And to back that up, the formations in this last season have had a specific formation that <coughs> uh, expanded the whole Rochelle, Metatronic Rochelle science by at least a thousand percent. Uh, huge increase in its capability um, and that created a large grid of uh, Rochelle grid of the advanced format across uh, France and Italy uh, as far as the Black Sea. That in turn opened up the, the whole planet where Europe is the uh, right forebrain and the uh, Middle, Middle East is the left and the GNC is the Ajna. Uh, but this opened up a point above the Ajna, all humans have it, and most don't know about it. Uh, Thoth calls it the Shambhala Gate. That's a metatronic Ajna, it's attuned. So the planet itself now has that installed using the hugely increased uh, uh, Rochelle dynamic, a metatronic system that's guided us throughout our whole history in this particular universe project and one that is downloading both star streams. Uh, that's a long but uh, relatively simple <laughs> explanation. Uh, if you say so. <laughs> if you the question I forgot about. <laughs> I was like, did that answer the question? <laughs> okay, all right. And maybe you have a Oh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, was there anything that actually stood oh. out? Oh, was yeah. Different about oh, yeah. You and, and your experience of, of workshops? Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to say the interconnectedness of the people because it was so strong, you know. But our other workshops have been mostly people we know, so I, I can't do that. Although it was so beautiful that I, I do want to honor it. Okay, it was it was just beautiful. The the love between everybody, the coherence, the um, couple little bumps that came, everybody you know worked out in the most amazing way. So that to me, I suppose, because that's kind of where I dwell, is was really was really beautiful. Was just seeing how people could work out um, any of the stuff that comes up in a workshop. There's there's people, there's egos, there's all the stuff that's there, and it was it was truly truly really beautiful how it all worked out. Um, and I think the other thing was the great diversity of, of, the, of what people were able to bring in. You know, it was, uh, we, had, we had an intention, but the, 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 all the messages, all that was brought in from so many different people was incredibly diverse, incredibly diverse. And yet it all, it was like this amazing, huge, big picture puzzle or something that everybody was able to bring their pieces in. And um, that stood out for me is, I don't know how different it was, but it was, it was strong, okay? You want, uh, so if that makes it different, then it was different, but it was, it was, truly it was a beautiful experience with people just interweaving all the stuff that they got to bring us into a coherent whole. Edie's answer uh, surfaces another important thing. Um, we had four young men in the 22-year-old range. Remarkable. They are very sensitive, perceptive, uh, right smack on, and um, somewhat unusual. Usually it's uh, women, and they, that's because uh, women have uh, three, according to those, uh, three energetic poles that support the heart chakra, where men have one. Uh, that's because uh, women are specializing in the earth, uh, uh, elemental realms, and so forth, which is pretty difficult to do, and that's why we're here. 
uh, doing what we were doing. But the men, actually their three poles are in the heaven range where the women's are in the earth range. And then the women have their single pole up in the heavenly field. So with the heaven-earth combination equal and, and needed in their interaction, then uh, the, the expanded male-female heart field, called a Katim sphere, exists in all arcs, and by the way is reflected pretty accurately in Matthew 17 in the transfiguration. Or the, uh, uh, the uh, scenario there with Yeshua, and I'm not going to go into that, but um, it looks to me that, well, in this group, the men were working at that level where we had the unified heart formats. So even though we intentionally set up a process first to establish that, balanced heart thing and the inner planes um, dynamics. It was already there uh, and the, these young guys were demonstrating that that uh, men are phasing in now with their three poles to assist the, the feminine in being able to bring in the higher realm not high in terms of superiority, but in terms of the programs in the, that realm can now come through not only the male linkage and power pack into the feminine generation scenario in the planet itself. So that now appears, the, the, the signs are there that this is happening on a larger scale and it's absolutely essential that it happen. And beautiful. So, and beautiful. Yeah, and beautiful, right. It's inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. When the two of you were working together and in your anchoring, obviously you're bringing in, you're the commander of the ship. You're obviously the commander of the ship and we were all in our configurations and uh, you were paying attention to where people were to be sitting and we all noticed that because we've been working together for quite a few years now. What we all noticed is you placed us in the positions that we are our strongest, and you don't you don't you don't know us. <laughs> you did not know us before you did that. Um, how do you decide that? Was it a logical game of let's put here? Did you just go down the list, or what happened there? And what was the back and forth between the two of you as you were putting that? putting the configurations together? Uh, it's a little bit of both. Intuition uh, and uh, down the list both. And, but uh, uh, Edie and I get together too and, and review who's here. The list itself, make sure we've got, we have everyone. But we also discuss uh, often uh, who can fit here and, and and so forth, and, and so she has a really an advanced um, intuition that uh, I rely uh, okay. greatly on as part of our team work. And so uh, I I select a, a format to start with. We don't lock into it, but it's a start point. So we used a, a Templar format, and that uh, links in across time with other. Templar formats, and that's overseen by a future uh, Solarian group on the Isle of Manan, presently Mount Masada. It's, it's going to be in an ocean, but that's a control point, the main Templar. So, anyway, that system was designed to enhance our, uh, our um, resonance 
with that whole line of temples across time in, in this conti uh, continuum. So the, our intention, what we're trying to do in the format to do it, uh, largely determines our, uh, who we want and what kind of position or uh, uh, and, and so it's it goes rather quickly but it, we get inputs you know, to make up this thing yeah. I put it on a whiteboard and, and so we can scrub it and change people around yes. and like you said you know really we didn't know the strengths of everybody so um, Bill likes to say trust the process and it's really uh, a great deal of trusting spirit you know, for the for the nudge to put someone here, put someone there, um, you, you just have to trust spirit. And like we saw in the in this last day, last process, uh, trusting that the people themselves, when they feel that they're a little bit out of line or maybe they need to be somewhere else, that the group is um, tuned in enough, intuitive enough, that they also will be part of that process and kind of rearrange themselves where they need to be. You know, even if it's just an inch over this way, or if it's a matter of changing seats or doing that, you know, that was also brought out beautifully by what people were able to do. Yeah. And we trust that we trust that part too. Yeah. You know, so yeah. trust the process. Trust the process. Well, again, if uh, we talked a little bit about our global project this morning, we do configurations in mm -hmm. the context of the, that, and the way that you placed us, especially on the first day. Mm -hmm as people were looking across from each other, this mm -hmm. way who they were sitting beside, mm -hmm. those are the configurations that mm -hmm. they have been in many, many times before. That had to be spirit's work. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and that's their job, you know, it's pretty yeah, cool. It's their part of it. I mean, yeah. actually, I can see that it made uh, that it made an impression on everybody, you know, that, that you weren't just sitting beside someone that you know some, but that it actually worked out that way. So that, to me, is spirit's mm -hmm. way of, of, of weighing in on yeah. on getting everybody even more coherent, more coherent for what's happening. Yeah, it, it, had, so. it had a very deep meaning for yeah. most of the yeah. people mm -hmm. in the room. Mm -hmm. We were kind of, a lot of our mouths were hanging over. Cool, and, and that's the way and, it should be. And giggling, be. and it was very exciting to recognize that we had all shown up for higher service, and yet we were getting an incredible blessing, not only mm -hmm. as a group, but individually as well. Mm -hmm. So that was really fun. Or we could just blame it all on No. <laughs> Give him all the credit. Good job, man. <laughs> yeah, and, and Bill, you had us in the same configuration throughout the weekend, too. Can you, can you speak well, to us That is a that? little bit different, yes. Yes, talk, talk to um, us about that. It was mainly due to the huge complexity of this temple system that we cooked up. That uh, I felt that we needed a, a, a more stable, um, strong core within a core. Uh, progression or action line through this thing yeah. the, because every session is going to be phasing in larger and larger formats and the formats already established were going to be increased and more active and the whole thing grows and only this time in you know, only three days I mean the, gro the expansion of it even in the same day, even while we were just sitting around talking, the thing was it really getting large. So I thought that the most stable, best linked in to the whole 20 cycle, half a million year project would be through the Solarians, the star races, governing or overseeing the whole programs across time through that Templar dynamic, state of being, and the energy systems, star systems involved, and the organization of it, and so forth, was actually designed um, to 
keep that coherency uh, going. So I felt that in view of what we were trying to do and the people being overseeing the whole thing, uh, that that Templemar was really sort of vital, a, a vital stable field that would uh, permit us more uh, flexibility actually if we could keep that, that coherency. Yeah. So that was the reason. Speak to us about, uh, a little bit more specifically about the core within the core. And the reason why I ask this is we have a lot of discussion about the core. We talk about the core as a frequency. We talk about it as a high heart coherency. We have terms that define what that frequency is, what it feels like, how it outpictures mm -hmm. in our lives, how we live it, how we uh, come into relationship with people. So we're actually living and breathing as a community our core. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, um, what you also don't know about coming into this weekend uh, is the fact that, as I mentioned, our core has imploded mm -hmm. several times very dramatically so within the context of this frequency that we're, we all feel that we're holding mm -hmm. up. So when you speak of the core within the core, can, can you speak to that in terms of the context of your language base mm -hmm. and the configuration that you had us in the, in the Templemar format? Okay. Um, when you said strengthen the core, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. drill down into that a little bit more. Okay. The overall temple field uh, selected is actually uh, the most advanced crop formation that I've seen in what it did in the season that it came up with uh, uh, during the London Olympics, which fed into the Olympics to get the whole thing out, all the formations, to get the thing out of the, into the planet. Uh, but this particular formation down in Italy uh, was also linked into establishing this huge uh, Rochelle grid across France and Italy last year. It greatly increased this year, as I mentioned. So that was keying into, um, uh, well, I'm not going to go into all those details, but that was, it's, it uses something called the platinum ray. Um, it, which is a very high ray with a golden uh, ray um, that can access situations that are highly advanced in the Metatronic field. Uh, and it used that ray in very sophisticated methods and at multiple levels. Um, so the whole formation becomes a cocoon or, or a Merkaba vehicle. By Merkaba I don't mean just a star tetra, I mean a vehicle, like it, it's a living ship, this thing, made up of uh, something, uh, a being state uh, called the Lotus Loci uh, that are creator beings for the planet in the future, the Metatronic future. They create, that's a living ship of that state of being. So that, and I'm not going to go into all that it does, but it can access divine fields through an interface called a weaver that can then sort out this and that and bring into a, a coherent stream into that kind of a ship that, they, that is so complex uh, that it can handle just about anything that can come into it. Okay, so that in itself has a core area. So I wanted to of generate the kind of group that could handle the core for this super, super temple, a living ship, living temple format. Um, so that in itself is, is highly demanding. What can a core group, what would that look like? And it should be able to fit in the other eight levels, four levels going one way, four levels going the other way, with a center one where that became the, the core of the core. But uh, then I had to come up with what 
would create the more, most effective core center that could handle any level in their own core levels and work together as a harmonic through the whole thing. So there's a crop formation, I'm not going to go into that, but there's a 13 eye of Ra or super time gate pillar, 13 of them form a ring with an outer ring of 20 poles when you do the geometry that comes up with a geochronism it's called where whatever goes on in this thing uh, sets up a harmonic into the planet. Does other things too but that's a big one. So I had two of these spinning uh, with the area between them um, and the area between we put in then a core within this core uh, uh, made up of what's called the Perithum Temple format. Now the Perithum Temple, there's four of them in the planet, each one has uh, 12 uh, Enochian masters living but in suspension in, in each of them, so there's 48 in all. Uh, so that's another long lecture, but that is a vital part of the ascension process that these Enochian masters hold uh, a, a field that's critical to the ascension and it's also there's a huge earth grid that was generated a prethym format um, that you know, extends from Nova Scotia to Iran. Holy of Holies is the England area um, uh, so anyway, this prethem large uh, circular format has an inner chamber. In that chamber, chamber there's a grail for, to hold the programs. So this is sort of a core within a core within a core within a core. And so there's a little multi-level core thing going on here. So this central grail is what the programs are uh, created in and it's so hot we don't want people in that field unless they're guided in by the hierarchical mentors as they often are for a while. Uh, so um, we formed, we used the Templemar format then to uh, form the outer core field around this central grail system. Then outside of that we have the, what's called the, the vault or the hall of the kings. That's where suspended masters are in the Perithum format. So we had representative beings in our core format. And then we representing each member synergically representing something in the collective planetary racial mind soul project out to interact with those uh, beings uh, which might be in Okin, they might be high selves, they might be angelic representatives of, of who knows what and that can flash into different states anytime. So anyway that overall format then could process just about anything metatronically keying into uh, the larger temple dynamics for the whole planet uh, designed to get us through what Thoth calls LP40, Light Principle 40, or the actual transition from our lower frequency uh, universe format into our own real metatronic reality. So all of this is in a resonant harmonic to get us from here to there. Yeah. And through all, right now we're in the last phase of going into this LP40 thing. So we're getting large programs coming in. And the idea of this whole thing is to be able to handle these programs, process them up to the level expected to get us from here to there. Yeah. So the car then has to be able to and the different levels within it have to be able to, to form a resonant harmonic with each other, with the temple, and that whole thing then 
with that large uh, demand, the requirement to be able to handle it like the ship in a, in a hurricane, it rides the waves, and the waves are the waves that generate the universe. So this ship idea is really a good one. Yes. Yeah, anyway, that's, yeah, no, that's great. another long answer. To that's it. great. And so you we talked about maybe even you can address this uh, also. We spoke about the core is not just the inner part of the ship. <laughs> it comprises the, 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 the essence of the wholeness and each person. Um, I remember when you talked about that and it was so it was so vital because um, none of this is going to happen if we're all scattered and can't stay within our own our own core the word we're using but our own self our own guidance our own strength you know without that we're like the rest of the world I'm sorry but that's true you know where people are scattered and don't really understand that they themselves have to hold the core of their being and and connect with whatever to them is higher and best and love and um, so that is the other core that is so essential to build the core he's talking about and 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 to build on it's like the building blocks of what we're doing you know we don't yeah. get to heart coherency if we don't have our own core you know and of course we're also heart coherency it means other people and their core and their love but that core that says, you know, who I am, what I'm doing, what I'm learning, what I'm yearning for, how I'm, how I'm addressing the world is so important. I have a, a, a postscript to the Edie's answer. Is, uh, Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Relative to, to the core and the individual need, uh, it's just recently it's been stressed to us very well rigorously from the inner planes that the one's own high self must begin now to bring forward power and strength their own power and strength and they themselves have to do it god isn't going to do it for them or anybody else in the inner planes you have free will to be what you are and so forth. The high self runs its own railroad and they won't mess with it. They'll help uh, in the co-creator kind of a, a sense. But it's the self that must generate the power and strength to be able to hold and process these huge things coming down the line daily. I mean, it's the tracks are rumbling in here. The great wave, we ride, to ride the mighty wave, uh, to put it into creation terms, uh, needs power and strength individually. And I think we saw a lot of that this weekend yeah, with, um, with the people that were there. You know, nobody freaked out, nobody. Uh, it was a very smooth, you know, we've had workshops where people were prostrate on the floor and had to be taken out because the energy was so strong. And it wasn't that the energy wasn't strong, but because you all have been working together for so long, uh, that inner core is obvious. Okay, people had it and they were able to just bring in the energies and, and work with whatever came up. I it would hasten to add that Energy-wise, nobody in my experience, over 6,000 hours, has ever been overexposed. The energies in this kind of a group, as long as we're open and free flow, hierarchy can work with us so they protect the least able to handle energy. So it's protected, uh, uh, the group and individuals, uh, energy-wise, nobody has ever burned. Right. Uh, light body or chakra or anything. But sometimes or, they do have to sit quietly for a while yeah, well, and integrate what they got. Yeah, you know? right. And that, uh, yeah. What, what do you think is the final result of what happened this last weekend? What, uh, what, what, was this a seed that was planted or was this a quantum flash leap that we just made? But what can we expect to see of the transformation of consciousness and the way that the world mm. is evolving mm. in, in a very swift way? It was a quantum flash as a seed. <laughs> uh, and as a hierarchy, uh, as our mentors have put it, it's 
this was the match that was struck with the tender that then will flash into this fire including the whole east coast and connections into it that will generate then enough of these light groups that are open and free flow that will permit those vital streams to come in that have to come in. Now they, the hierarchy can, send, can make the streams come in, but with humans, the, the ground crew as they call it, we are, call ourselves the away team using the Star Trek uh, context, uh, with physical teams we can form gateways or portals for that streaming to come in so w it, they can, the hierarchy, can expand the content of that streaming, make it more precise, advance their schedules even. We've had this happen. They can advance the schedules on certain programs and expand them with a kind of uh, group that we, uh, format that we use. So this one, in view of its radically expanded intention and the formats used and so forth have have set a, a pattern, a program. That that program now exists in the uh, mental plane and it has enough inner planes interest as, as our mentors said, where there are bleachers of them, bleachers on bleachers um, figured symbolically speaking, of all these inner planes of uh, people that are watching what we're doing and they in turn during our processing, they have their processes and what we do then influences what they do and have. So all that has been going on. So we can uh, assume from that, well in view of the success and the images that we got, uh, uh, the swords of Christ, uh, the huge uh, column and figures and, and so forth, this apparent increase in the Draco uh, serpent dragon dynamics and, and on and on. A lot of things happened that can, uh, that is a valid basis for assuming that the workshop um, uh, not only did what it intended, but was also exceeded in, in the scope of beyond our expectation. It, it always happens, but again, uh, this is, in the way it's been described, and who, big interest, uh, expectations on the inner planes, mentors that have, or people, agencies that have been brought in as this thing has developed more and more as the plan generated. Uh, in view of the increase in that area in this creation realm and the doers and shakers in that end of it, we can predict really solidly, I think, that there will be more synergic style, whatever formats, uh, cultural things and so on, but basically people dumping everything they've ever learned, being open to a whole new Metatronic Universe format that then permits the free flow and so forth that can form the kind of group then that can permit a higher level streaming to come through them. If you have a lo lower level frequency state of being group that restricts the kind of energy that can come through. So the group actually, the quality, function, efficiency of the group reflects what can come through. That. And as I say, schedules can change and be expanded and so forth depending on how that group is functioning. So we can predict, I think, uh, more, larger, uh, the American way, more is better. <laughs> One of the beautiful things 
is that we can't answer that question and the reason that's beautiful is because just like Bill says there's so much going on in the inner planes that that is allowed to happen that goes on out beyond what we can know and so it's uh, to me it's wonderful that we can't put it in a box and say well this happened and that happened because we're all working with energetics here and the beings the mentors all these wonderful people that have their own program, so to speak, can now take that out into what they want to do, how they want to work it into interacting with humans and, and seeing that they're more open to what's happening. And so yeah, we have to come into it not knowing what we're doing. We have to come into it allowing and letting go of the results because it's so cosmic that we can't know. And to me, that's just wonderful. It is. That's right. It's we, wonderful. we stay out of the way. Uh, reduce the expectation that permits something even larger than we could even imagine. And the other beautiful mm -hmm. thing that I've seen is well, two things. One, more and more people are coming to Bill saying, explain to me what I have. You know, they're opening up, they're saying, I see these visions, I see this in the sky, I see this, what does it mean? They're all asking, what does it mean, what does it mean, what does it mean? And, um, and then the other thing is they're saying, what we did explain to me made all the pieces fit and they're just like oh you know I'm not crazy I understand the bigger picture now I can relate more to what's happening it's, it's beautiful to see that that's on a more personal level but the, we're the people and so they're more open now okay they're not going oh, what did I get oh my god I must be crazy they're going whoa this is great you know I see the bigger picture who can I talk to how can I explain and they're opening up which is what is needed is for us all to open up to the bigger picture and I see it happening now over and over again much faster than it used to it's really really wonderful and even in within the own with the group I heard people saying oh I understand now oh this makes sense to me oh you know, oh thank God you know because we all want to understand those things that we're getting on a level that we can't understand so I tend to resist the idea is my thing uh, well of course you just, just got the wheel of course and, uh, we all know that but <laughs> someone has try to and beat the waves that's what a commander does, though, right? Well, yeah, but there's always a bigger boss. Right, so you're following The ship belongs to somebody else, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we said we'd only do this for 15 minutes, and it's you know, going on 70 now. So. Oh, wow, wow. Oh, Time great. flies. <laughs> so that's so wonderful. So, um, parting words for mm -hmm. those that are going to hear you say, uh, mm -hmm. what, uh, what are your next steps? Um, mm -hmm. What's, what comes well, next in your grand adventure, as we say? God knows. <laughs> he has to wake up and find out. <laughs> yeah, it depends on what happens tonight, really? I guess. Uh, I don't know, you've got to be open. Uh, what I would like, you know, the tentative idea, uh, miracles happen, uh, that, uh, we, that someone kind of shows up that can afford uh, uh, a bit of land, and we know for land for just for five thousand dollars, maybe, in a vital point for the planet. Uh, if we can get some land, uh, build on it. Uh, I'm 79, but uh, with a few more miracles, uh, I can well, I'll be, live to see the thing built. Take a couple of years, probably. I'd like to see. Uh, um, Healing center, but healing is trying to fix something well, necessary uh, in, a, in terms of the future. It's sort of a creative process, a transmutation kind of a process and from an old system, which was vital at the time, religions and so forth, but now are designed for a continuum going out of existence and we're building a new one. So this kind of a center would have to, uh, in he the healing aspect, be um, adopted the field, the education, and practice to be able to make that trans uh, transitional transmutation kind of a thing happen with people and groups. So that in turn would require uh, an educational capability, an academy of sorts, 
mystery school, whatever the term is, that can instruct in the dynamics, which are really dynamic dynamics, uh, and keep up with it, not get locked into something just because it was written yesterday, uh, but completely open and, and adopted in its who's there and what they're doing daily to be able to keep up with the demands that are huge. So that requires also not just the building and the positioning and so forth, but the, the crew, uh, the ground crew, to be totally res responsive and frequency-wise, light bodies brought up to speed, uh, big picture type of people that can then focus in different areas, bringing this the coherency to new situations daily. Uh, and with clients coming in, uh, people to be educated, worked with, trans transmutation, healing, whatever you call it, to be able to adjust to the client, be it group or individual, uh, and to be able then to teach, to coach, to uh, blend with a hierarchical stream that is vital in anything that's going on in this center. So that's what I would, what I think we really need on a larger scale. And I really appreciate the miracle that would permit us to see that. <laughs>